a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Glad to have you with us on the program. Coming up here in a a couple of minutes, we're going to be talking with Alan Gottlieb, the uh, founder, executive vice president of the Second Amendment Foundation. We're going to be talking about uh, what happened yesterday at the Supreme Court. Uh, In essence, the uh, court passing by a number of good Second Amendment cases. Now, that right to carry case out of New York, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Corlett, also known as New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. Uh, That case, the court has held over yet again. Uh, And while ordinarily it's not a bad sign to uh, to see the court relist a case. In fact, uh, under ordinary circumstances, it's it's generally a positive development. It it means that the court's taken this case seriously. Given the fact that the court uh, chose not to accept any of these three cases dealing with nonviolent felons who were seeking to have their firearm rights restored, I think it is uh, understandable uh, that many gun owners are are increasingly skeptical that the court is going to provide uh, any kind of relief when it comes to challenging uh, gun control laws that are already on the books. Uh, Adam Kraut, Senior Director of Legal Operations of the Firearms Policy Coalition, which uh, represented several of the petitioners who were turned down by the court yesterday, said, well, we're disappointed that the Supreme Court chose to allow grossly improper lower court rulings to stand uh, we will continue our aggressive litigation strategy. So the group would, quote, immediately move forward with new challenges in lower courts to, quote, address serious constitutional questions uh, about the extent of the Second Amendment right. So in, in these particular cases, you've got uh, one individual who is convicted of a pair of DUI offenses who is seeking to have his rights restored. Uh, there was a woman who was convicted of one count of tax fraud uh, who lost her right to keep her arms for the rest of her life. Uh, and maybe the most compelling case, uh, Flick versus, now it's Flick versus Garland. It was Flick versus Barr. A gentleman who was convicted in uh, the late 80s of making counterfeit cassette tapes, basically, you know, pirated cassette tapes, lost his right to keep in bare arms as a result forevermore. Uh, there's maybe there should be a standard like when you're convicted of you know piracy and and that um uh a, a product that you're using is no longer used or even available maybe then the uh there should be an expiration date on the loss of your rights cuz we don't we don't even use cassettes anymore uh you know if you find maybe there are some hipsters out there who love that hiss just they love to you know flip the tape over to to side B, but most of us don't use cassettes. But it doesn't matter uh, because the single count of pirating cassette tapes from the 1980s was enough to end Mr. Flick's ability to legally own a farm for the rest of his life. Given the fact that Justice Amy Coney Barrett had said uh, during her confirmation hearings that and had said in a a case when she was on uh, an appeals court. That she believes the standard should really be dangerousness. It shouldn't just be, well, you've been convicted of a felony offense, therefore you lose your right to keep your arms forevermore. It is uh, both somewhat surprising and uh, disappointing that the court did not agree to hear a single one of these cases. Uh, And that's where we begin our conversation with Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation, uh, continuing on with the question, uh, is the court a lost cause? Take a look and a listen. Alan, thanks so much for joining me on the program today. It's good talking with you, sir. Always great to be with you, Cam, and your listeners. Thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, All right. So let's get right into it here. Um, The Supreme Court on Monday once again held over the New York Kerry case. They didn't take action on it. They didn't dismiss it. They didn't accept it. Keeping it uh, around for at least another week or so. But they did reject uh, three cases uh, dealing with uh, nonviolent felons who were seeking to regain their right to keep and bear arms. Uh, one of these individuals had a couple of DUIs. Uh, one woman had been convicted, I believe, of a single count of uh, tax fraud. And then there was a guy, uh, Mr. Flick, who back in the 80s was convicted of basically pirating a cassette tape or pirating cassette tapes. Uh, and because of that nonviolent offense, he has lost his ability to keep and bear arms for the rest of his life. 
We know that Justice Amy Coney Barrett had talked about wanting to adopt a, a dangerous standard. Uh, you know, somebody basically saying that a, a simple felony conviction should not be enough to result in a lifetime deprivation of your right to keep and bear arms. And yet, um, apparently, uh, Justice Comey Barrett's uh, position did not hold sway on the court because there were not four votes to accept any one of these cases. How, how concerned are you by, uh, by the court's inaction yesterday? Well, whenever there's inaction in defense of Second Amendment rights, I'm not a happy camper. Uh, I have no idea why they didn't take at least one of these three cases. I was pretty sure that they would. Uh, but, you know, they have a very tight schedule and uh, an awful lot on their plate. And maybe these cases are coming down quite at the, at the wrong time for timing, for them, them being able to fill up their, their plate for what they're going to actually hear. I don't really know. If I'll, I mean, I could speculate, but I'd probably be wrong. Yeah. Uh, but I am disappointed. Okay. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, that's, that's one of the things is we don't know why we don't know what the vote was. We don't know, uh, uh, you know, what, what the reasoning and the arguing was behind closed doors because the Supreme court is probably the last leak proof institution in Washington, DC and what generally happens in conference, uh, stays in conference. So you're right. We don't know those internal deliberations, but are, are, are you, um, are you concerned that this is a signal that the court may be reluctant to hear any, Second Amendment case going forward, including the, the the right to carry case out of New York, as well as some pending right to carry challenges that the court will have the chance to review in the months ahead. Well, I am concerned about that. Uh, I don't know if it is a signal that they're not going to take a Second Amendment case or not. Uh, I Somewhere down the line, I believe they're going to have to take one. The question is that all on timing. You know, timing is everything with this. So if they don't take uh, the New York case that's before them, I'm hoping they'll take another one. There's a whole lot of them coming, perking coming on up. They may be watching a number of the cases that are coming up up to them uh, and looking and have, have certain favorites they want to look at, and, and maybe they're waiting for one of those. Again, it's speculation. I really can't say. But I do believe they are going to take a Second Amendment case you know, sooner rather than later. And obviously, the Second Amendment Foundation is not giving up on the legal system because you all are still involved in uh, not only a number of existing lawsuits, but you're filing new litigation, it seems, almost every day. Well, at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we have like, you know, uh, 30 to 40 cases in federal court on, working their way up to the Supreme Court. Because you never know which one's going to take it from which circuits they'll take them from. Uh, and somewhere down the line, we know they're going to take one. So we're priming the pump, so to speak. You know, uh, gun control advocates are priming the pump as well. I don't think we've had the chance to uh, to speak since uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, issued his executive, uh, uh, not actions, but his, well, I guess, yeah, executive actions, not executive orders. Uh, we've got a number of uh, pending changes possible coming from the uh, ATF and the Department of Justice. Um, when you look at the the landscape right now, both at the federal level and the state level in terms of uh, the gun control laws that are being put on the books, uh, most of them, again, aimed squarely at legal gun owners. Uh, how, how concerned are you uh, about the, the, the attacks on our right to keep and bear arms? I mean, even if Congress right now, they don't have the votes to get Biden's gun ban bill through – uh, it seems like, you know, they're they're willing to use the states. They're willing to use localities sometimes uh, and they're willing to use, you know, regulations as opposed to legislation. Um, and all of these things, again, are seem to be aimed at you and I and other legal gun owners, responsible gun owners, as to as opposed to people who are criminally misusing firearms to commit violent acts. Yeah, it's like they'd like to take all of our guns, lock them up and let all the criminals go free. Uh, they don't really want to, uh, you know, attack the people who are really, you know, creating the crimes and the rapes, murders, et cetera. They want to attack law-abiding gun owners. Uh, and, and if that's never going to solve our problems, then it's also going to polarize our country that much further, which isn't very good. On the state level, uh, Cam, you know, in, in the red states, so to speak, we're gaining ground and getting pro, pro rights laws passed. It's the, it's the handful of blue states that the Democrats control that are the problem. And of course, right now we're, we've got lots of problems in Congress. One of my big concerns, though, is packing the U.S. Supreme Court. You know, the Democrats have come out to wanting to add four more judges to the Supreme Court, which would take away a pro-rights majority from that court and be able to overturn the, you know, precedents of Heller and McDonald with, uh, with other litigation. These anti-gunners know, uh, we have a, the, the pump prime with lots of cases coming to the courts. 
and they want to make sure that those cases don't extend or expand gun rights. And this is what really concerns me more than anything. It, it concerns me, too, even with Nancy Pelosi saying, oh, I'm not going to bring the bill to the floor for now. Uh, and I think a lot of folks are missing the fact that she said for now uh, she didn't rule out bringing uh, a, a court packing bill to the floor. I think she wants to wait until Biden's commission uh, comes back with their recommendations, which I'm sure will include uh, packing the court. And, you know, that that I think is going to. um I think it's really going to be a, a front and center issue later this year and in, in heading into the midterm elections. And, you know, as far as a matter of timing, I think it's actually probably bad for Democrats. I think it's good for uh, conservatives, good for Second Amendment supporters that they're trying to raise this issue uh, before the midterm elections, because I, I, I hope that we can get the message out about what this would actually mean uh, in terms of, as you say, eradicating. Uh, our right to keep and bear arms, undoing Heller, undoing McDonald and replacing those decisions with decisions that say, actually, you know what? We got it wrong. You don't have a right to keep and bear arms. And every gun control law imaginable is going to pass constitutional muster because it's impacting some sort of privilege to own a gun rather than a right to keep and bear one. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't have said it any better. You know, it's, it's the same politicians that say I support the Second Amendment, but. And when you put the button there, then everything is, is, is on the table to be, quote unquote, n- not protected by the Second Amendment. And that's the kind of judges that, you know, the, this administration is going to be appointing from the lower courts all the way to the Supreme Court. I think as you add four additional seats to the Supreme Court, they can pretty much, you know, erase the Second Amendment from our Constitution. Yeah. Well, you know, I know one of the things that the Second Amendment Foundation is doing right now uh, uh, to, to generate that grassroots activism, you have your Second Amendment first responder program. Uh, and I, I'm curious, I know that this is going very well. Uh, you've been advertising nationally for quite some time. Um, are you hearing from new gun owners as well as existing gun owners who say, all right, you know what, I'm going to get off the couch. I'm going to start becoming more active. Who, who is it that is responding to this call to action? I think it's both new gun owners as well as gun owners in general that have been, come, become complacent, so to speak, and haven't been all that active. I mean, last night, for example, we picked up over 2,000 new people off of our TV advertising uh, on, on national cable TV networks. Now, this week, we have like 110 spots running nationally, and I just put a buy-in for next week. It'll be approximately about 110 spots again for next week. So I'm really kind of excited about being able to reach out to uh TV networks and, you know, across all platforms and news and even the Weather Channel. Uh, and we're uh, picking up new people all the time that aren't, you know, already uh, on our list. I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about it, too, because we need every gun owner and every Second Amendment supporter to be active and engaged right now. Uh, and this is a great way to do so. Uh, Alan, as always, sir, I appreciate you joining me on the program. It's good talking with you. I hope you have a fantastic week and I hope we get a chance to catch up again very soon. I hope so, Cam. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Gottlieb joining us from the Second Amendment Foundation here on Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. Appreciate Alan joining us on the program. And, you know, again, I'm I'm I, I, I've not given up hope when it comes to the Supreme Court. But um, we've got, you know, the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case, case dealing with the right to carry. Got a case out of New Jersey that uh, the court should hear in the next couple of months. You've got Young versus Hawaii, case dealing with uh, that abysmal decision in the Ninth Circuit ruling that uh, there is no right to openly carry a firearm protected under the Second Amendment. The Ninth Circuit has previously ruled there's no right to carry a concealed firearm under the Second Amendment. So there's no right to bear arms contained in the right to keep and bear arms. If the court bypasses each and every one of those carry cases, in addition to you know what we've seen from the court so far this session, I don't think there's any way to reach uh, a conclusion other than the fact that the uh, court is going to offer no relief for uh, Second Amendment supporters. But I am uh, hopeful. Again, I can't say I'm confident, but I'm hopeful that the court will take at least one of those pending carry cases. I'd love it to be the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case because it's there already. Uh, But uh, they've got a couple more whacks at this uh, in the months to come. All right, let's turn our attention now to today's Armed Citizen story, our good deed of the day, our recidivist report. We will start there with a a story out of Minnesota, where an arrest has been made in connection with the shooting of two uh, National Guard soldiers over the weekend. As it turns out, the uh, individual arrested, already known 
to law enforcement because he's a convicted felon. Uh, the uh, Grand Forks Herald reports that uh, 28-year-old Andrew Thomas charged on Monday with one count of possessing a firearm as a felon. He is scheduled to make his first appearance before a judge today. He's not been charged with firing these shots that actually uh, injured the uh, soldiers. There were a team of four soldiers who were sitting inside their vehicle about 4.20 uh, uh, in the morning on Sunday when someone in a light-colored SUV fired multiple shots at them. One bullet went through the vehicle's windshield, injuring two of the soldiers, one taken to a nearby hospital, the other treated the scene for superficial wounds. Uh, Sunday night, about 10 p.m., Minneapolis police spotted a 2002 Ford Explorer that matched the description of the suspect vehicle. They followed the vehicle. They pulled it over in a parking lot. Uh, Andrew Thomas was driving. There was a juvenile inside the car as well who told officers that Thomas had a gun in the car. Uh, Thomas is the owner of that Ford Explorer. Uh, police obtained a warrant to search the vehicle. They found a semi-automatic 9mm pistol as well as a 22 caliber revolver, a, a partial box of 357 caliber ammunition, uh, as well as two pistol magazines along with two spent shell casings. Police test fired the 9mm and a, a preliminary ballistics an analysis uh, indicates that the uh, markings left on the spent shell casings match those of the shell casings found at the scene of the shooting of the National Guard. They're still doing a fingerprint analysis and DNA analysis of that pistol. Uh, we don't yet know what Andrew Thomas was previously convicted of, uh, but we do know that he is not allowed to possess that firearm, and now he is facing the federal charges. I'll be very curious to see uh, what those actual charges were, and we'll uh, hopefully be able to bring you more information on that in a, a future Cam and Company. Today's Armed Citizen story from Vancouver, Washington, where a newspaper delivery driver forced to defend himself over the weekend happened at the uh, Vancouver waterfront, according to KATU. Authorities say the man was on the job delivering newspapers. It was about 4.30 in the morning. He got out of his car to drop off the newspapers. He got back into his vehicle, and there was a stranger sitting inside. Uh, according to KATU, details are limited, but police say, quote, at some point, the delivery person shoots the person inside the vehicle. Police noted that the uh, delivery driver is a licensed concealed carry holder. The uh, individual who was shot did not survive the shooting. Uh, Vancouver police say that the uh, driver is cooperating. So far, no charges have been filed. Again, we don't know all of the details, but this appears at the moment uh, to be a case of self-defense, and we'll give you any updates as those become available as well. Finally today, our good deed of the day, Richmond Heights, Ohio, where an officer in the right place at the right time wasn't unable to do the right thing to save a choking infant. This was Friday night. Emergency crews called to a home for reports of a baby not breathing. Marion Rucker, who is the baby's mom, said, I heard him cry out, and I jumped up when I heard the cry because he doesn't make too much noise. So once he made a little cry out, I knew something was wrong. He turned purple, and I grabbed him, and I just started CPR. Sergeant Greg Patterson was one of the uh, first on the scene. He uh, flipped the baby over, doing uh, back blows, started chest compressions. He said the mom came running to the front door with the baby in her hands, handed the baby over to me. I could see immediately that the baby's face was blue, didn't look like it was breathing. He said once you hear that cry and you see that it is breathing, it is definitely a uh, relief. Doctors believe that um, the infant might have choked on some milk. Uh, he was released from the hospital Monday afternoon and uh, is back home with mom. Again, in the right place at the right time. Well, then able to do the right thing. Sergeant Greg Patterson with the Richmond Heights, Ohio Police Department. We thank you, sir, for your very, very good deed. Now, that is about all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. But I do want to thank you for being a part of the program as well. Uh, don't forget, you can subscribe to Town Hall Media. That way, uh, on YouTube, that way you'll never miss a program. Also, uh, Bearing Arms Cam and Company on Rumble. Also on uh, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, the townhall.com podcast page. Plenty of ways for uh, you to find us. And listen, if you want to support Bearing Arms and uh, Town Hall Media's coverage of the Second Amendment and help us in our fight against President Biden's uh, gun control agenda, you can do so by becoming a VIP member. We know that uh, that might not be for everybody, but you can... And if you want to support a great team of conservatives who are standing up for your right to keep and bear arms, go to bearingarms.com slash subscribe. Uh, we've got a link in the description in the video window below. You can use the promo code GUNS 
G-U-N-S, to get 25% off of your subscription. Uh, these funds allow us to report on the issues that you care about. Uh, we also are able to do special things for our VIP subscribers. You get uh, special access to content, things like our VIP Gold Live Chats. We want to thank each and every one of you who have already become VIP subscribers, and thank you for those of you uh, who join up as well. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free.